Hey everyone, my name is Jared Trotter. I'm an applications engineer for Go Engineer. I'll be your host today for this webinar on using appearances and textures in SOLIDWORKS Visualize. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And I think I'd describe this as an intermediate level webinar on using this tool, SOLIDWORKS Visualize. So even if you're familiar with Visualize, I think you'll uh, get something out of it, maybe see some tools that uh, you weren't as familiar with. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump uh, right into the content here. And what I'd like to do is start by switching over to uh, SOLIDWORKS so uh, you guys can take a look at the model that we'll be working with today. Um, if you saw the promo for this webinar, you saw some dice on a table, and I've actually added a little bit to that. Here we've got uh, some materials for one of my favorite games, Yahtzee. So we've got some dice, we've got the uh, cup, and we've got you know, a scorecard over here on the table here. And we're going to see what we can do here and visualize to uh, really make this uh, model kind of pop and come to life here. So I'll switch back over uh, to visualize. We'll just start a new project here. And I'm starting here because I want to show you guys some of the import options here. Once you click a new project and you go to import, uh, you'll of course choose you know, which model that you're using. And from the start here, we have uh, the options under import settings. And I'm going to choose the part grouping option here, um, appearance. And it will be apparent uh, why I'm doing that here in just a little bit. I want to also point out that I have decals turned on as well because I have a decal in that model uh, that I want to be able to capture. So with these settings, I'll go ahead and click OK. Go ahead and bring our model up here. And in order to get a wider view, we're going to go ahead and create uh, another camera view here. So add a new camera. That should um, change the ratio here based on the default settings. And we'll just kind of position our model here roughly how we want it. So we're going to come in and uh, start playing with these uh, appearances a little bit. So I mentioned that you know, I want to turn on the appearances same because of how it groups it. Um, depending on you know your scheme, if you want to group things by components, if you want to group things by appearances, you have some flexibility with how you want to bring that in. Um, in our case, um, I know that for these appearances here, like these dice here, they all have the same you know, white you know, color here. All these little dots on the die are the same color. So if I go here and I want to change that, rather than uh, changing each one of them you know, one at a time, I can come in and bring, say, since I want to make these dice red, uh, I can come in and bring uh, this appearance from my library. And as I drag it onto one die, um, it changes all of them. Um, so that's you know, kind of what I want there. And pretty much going to leave uh, the, the black appearance the way it is. Uh, leave those dots there. But of course, if you drag any onto there, then it would change uh, in the same way. So uh, we've got a little bit of reflectivity going on there. We've got a little bit you know, of shine that, that shows up there. So that's going to be nice uh, for our final render. And still looking here at our appearances here. Um, now I'm in the paint section. Maybe I want to get uh, maybe a little bit, a slightly different color blue there. And just drag that on uh, to the face. And another thing I want to point out, so with the Yahtzee card here, um, Utilize is going to recognize is basically the way that I modeled this. So this is um, essentially a multi-body uh, part here. There's a little section on the bottom here where um, it's going to basically be like that little cardboard here. So you may be able to see that there. Just going to click on it to highlight it some. And on this one, I'm going to add in um, something similar to like a, a wood appearance. So I'll just come over here to the library section, uh, click on wood, and any of these would uh, pretty much suffice. I'll click this one up here, drag it in. And you can you know, see see what that looks like there. Um, as a note, uh, you may be aware of this or not, but here on the libraries tab, uh, there is a local and a cloud you know, toggle there. So uh, yours may not be as extensive here, just because if you switch to cloud, uh, you'll see that these are all of the 
uh, appearances that you can is that you can uh, download from SolidWorks. You just have to click on and download it. And when you do download it, it has that little green check mark there. So I pretty much got all of those downloaded there. So they um, all those show up over here when I go to local. Uh, now to start to customize these things a little bit more, uh, you'll see with this particular appearance that I have that the striations are going up and down. Uh, perhaps I want to change that though. We'll uh, look at this even more when I get to the next model um, or next part. But if you click on that, you'll see that there um, are a few options there. And just here under uh, texture, of course, we've got the color here. And if we want to rotate that, we can just come down to rotate there. We can use the slider um, or use you know, this little uh, little circle here, or we can just type it in. And that's what I'm going to do. I just change that to 90. And so now the striations um, are actually going to, so now the striations um, are actually going to go uh, in this direction instead of up and down. So zoom back out here and go ahead and move this kind of uh, back into focus over here. Visualize thinking about it. Let's move this over uh, just a little bit more. And now what I want to turn uh, the attention to is this table here. So if we look at the table, we've got a few options. We can go to our libraries over here. We could bring in some different options for our wood that would that look pretty good. So uh, if we bring in, like say this, this white oak, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, or you know, maybe this English walnut that we've got, um, it's a little bit on the darker side. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually choose an appearance that I've downloaded um, already and where to uh, download some additional material. So be sure to stick around for that. So just go to appearance here. I'm going to click the toggle here for color to add that. And this is in my downloads here. So I'll go to this folder and get this section here. So this is um, called Brick Bond. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And you should see it come up over here. So there's the color. Uh, if I want to go over here um, to general, now I can go ahead and change that color if I want, or change the name of it rather. And think about this appearance. Uh, one thing I point out with the appearance type here, um, right now it's set to plastic. And generally you're uh, gonna wanna leave that set to plastic as opposed to these other options, uh, mainly because of the options that it gives you here on the texture tab. So we're mostly gonna be concerned with color and bump. Uh, throughout this webinar, but um, I'll go ahead and mention these other two as well. Uh, specular and Alpha, uh, those two options, uh, you can choose to overlay a black and white kind of color map on it. Uh, specular will allow you to uh, have the uh, section that you designate as being on the white side of it to be raised a little bit and the black to be lower to kind of create some depth of feel there and some uh, three dimensionality to it. Uh, alpha, you put that on there and then it can actually show some of the things that are white and then have the things that are black disappear a little bit uh, or vice versa, you can flip that. Uh, but again, we won't be using those options. I'm gonna use the bump map instead. So uh, go ahead and I'll drag this appearance onto uh, the plate here. So I'll go ahead and click uh, bump map there. And for the bump map, again, what that does is allow uh, things to be you know, raised or lowered. And that's almost always going to be this kind of blue purple color here. And then as soon as I select it here and I click open, uh, you may be able to see it uh, within the, the viewport here. You'll see there are little striations there. And you'll see there in the viewport, uh, we've got these little striations there as well. Um, so you can we can change that. I'll actually zoom out uh, just a little bit here. And we're going to play around with this pattern a little bit. So uh, the first thing that I want to do is see how you know these uh, panels essentially are going in this direction. I want to flip that. So I'll go ahead and go to color and just go ahead and flip that uh, to 90. 
Uh, now, as I do that, uh, you'll notice a couple of the striations from our bump map are still going in this direction. And that's going to be the significance of on the texture tab using the sync textures option, um, because then that way uh, the rotation is going to match up and then the, the bump map will match up to the color so that, um, you know, those are overlaid um, exactly right, no matter what changes that you make to them. Uh, there's a few other things that we can change here. Um, just looking at, uh, we'll go ahead and click on the color, make sure that one's activated here. Uh, we can change the tiling of it. So if we change the tiling um, and choose a different number there, if I go lower, um, say 0.25, you'll see if these panels become you know, much uh, thicker versus if you turn it up, then um, let's see, I go to maybe 1.75 or something like that. Uh, then we see you have a bunch of uh, panels there. And then we see you have a bunch of uh, panels there. And you can choose to um, link these values here, uh, the U column and the V column. U applies to you know, one direction and then V applies to the other one. You can choose to have that linked uh, so that the uh, ratio stays the same, uh, or you can choose to you know, break that link, uh, whichever you know, one you prefer. Uh, so I'm gonna break it and I'll put that back at uh, one, I think that it looks pretty good. And maybe I'll take this down a little bit there. So we've got our panels. And then if you want to just shift this, so keep the ratio and then just shift it a little bit, um, you know, moving it down, you have that, that option as well. And you'll see that uh, this uh, panel here, it actually has kind of a red tint to it. Just a little bit. That's actually been modified a bit from you know how this color looks because of um, some saving that I did earlier. But if we go back over to the general tab here, we can uh, go to color and you'll see that we can uh, change what essentially is like the flaking or the uh, highlighting color. So uh, I can just drag that you know, back over here and you see that we get kind of that more uh, natural color that we had beforehand. So you can kind of play with that a little bit to get um, just the right shade that you want. So I'll go ahead and leave it there. And then uh, similarly, you can uh, change the you know, highlighting color uh, to kind of fine tune it there. And uh, just going back over here uh, to the texture mapping, or not texture mapping, but the texture here. Uh, if I go back over here and click on bump, uh, we can actually change the bump strength here. So uh, how much these lines and these little striations, um, you know, are, are accentuated, how strong that is. So uh, we can, of course, turn it down you know, pretty low uh, where we don't get very much raising at all. Um, or we can, you know, increase that um, so that uh, those lines really show up. So uh, we get to play with that a little bit. I'll just click on that, change that to a, a slightly different value. And that's starting um, to look kind of the way we want it. But um, I found that the you know, one thing that can really make uh, your photos pop is the correct lighting. So uh, here under one of the default scenes that we have, um, I found that this high contrast uh, ramp worked really well for this particular model. So uh, this environment is just kind of preset with certain places has background associated to it so we'll just bring that in here so that high contrast there and similarly to uh, the other options for our textures and our colors we can rotate this as well so uh, in fact you can just drag this little slider here and I'll drag in such a way that half of it is kind of lit and the other half is not as much. So you can see kind of a little, you know, contrast there. So uh, now we see that it's starting to pop a little bit more. Uh, we can see these striations you know, coming out there. And this render um, with the settings I have, it doesn't take too long to render. It takes about uh, five minutes. Uh, but of course, I'm not going to render that here and have you guys wait for that. So I just want to go ahead and pull up 
a picture here of a render that um, I did earlier. Let me get to it here. So uh, this is one that I did a little bit earlier. You can see that the coloring I had changed a little bit um, mm -hmm. and get this nice sheen here on this tabletop from the light and that these boards here appear to be you know, raised and lowered with respect to each other. Uh, so you can kind of play around with those and really get the result that you want. Um, just in the way of uh, render, rendering times, um, depending on what material you choose, if you choose something that's uh, a higher uh, resolution, then it's going to, of course, you know, take a little bit longer. Um, and one thing that I also wanted to point out here uh, in Visualize that I have, uh, we, I mentioned that we do have decals over here. Um, some cases when you're dragging materials in and out, uh, you may find that your decal disappears. It didn't on me you know, this time, but in the event that your decal does disappear on you, you're wondering where it went, uh, you can just you know, click on the model that has it and you'll see update uh, decal texture there, or you can just you know, auto update it there. So be mindful of if you choose to use uh, decals in any of your part modeling. So uh, from there, I told you guys that I would show you where to get some of these extra appearances from. So let me toggle over here to my uh, Google Chrome. And there's two websites that I want to uh, bring to you guys' attention. One, uh, you would just um, type into Google uh, NVIDIA material, and it's going to point you to this website here. It should be the first result under material uh, definition language. And NVIDIA will uh, provide you with a material library. So um, here, there's this hyperlink here. You've uh, really got to be looking for it. Um, you'll click on this and put in your email information and you'll be sent an executable file of a library of different materials. Uh, so some of those work uh, fairly well. Uh, the one that I prefer over this though that has uh, even more options is Polygon. More options is Polygon. So it's just uh, polygon.com. So it's Polygon with two eyes. And I believe you do have to you know, sign up. It's, it's free to sign up in order to you know, get the textures. But I'll just go ahead and click on the textures here so you can kind of see some of the options that you have. Um, of course, we can scroll through. You see that there are several different categories um, that are there from uh, you know, your bricks or to a different food or uh, streets. There's a um, and wood options, which is you know the one that I got know my wood from. So if I just go back here to all categories um, and I'm going to refine by because some of these you do have to pay for, but many of them are free. So if you just toggle on the free option, you'll see that there are several different you know, fabrics and textures uh, that you can download there. So, um, are going to be free to download and that's going to come with um, those different options that you may have seen me pick through. So it's going to have, of course, an image map to have the color on there. It's also going to have a bump map associated to it so you can make um, you know, different regions stand out or be you know, accented a little bit more than the others. Um, there's also a few uh, really neat ones here. And I believe this is going to be on there, uh, the main website. There's a really good example of it. If I scroll down here, um, like surface imperfections, like the fingerprints that you can overlay on top of your materials. So uh, they have a lot of good options here on uh, Polygon. So you can really uh, make your product stand out and you know, make it. So uh, that's actually um, all that I have for uh, this webinar today on appearances and textures. I uh, hope you did learn something from uh, this webinar today. Uh, hopefully it was beneficial to you. Thanks for tuning in and hope everybody has a great day.